With us now producing heavy modular frames, and in our last episode, computers, we're now ready to start scaling up our factories. And with update eight already here, you're probably wondering, why am I still in this save? Why not start again? And the truth is though I'd love to, I just never really got to the late game and I've never done a big factory. So I thought rather than restart, why not start a mega factory project? After all, we do have a train station facility here ready to start running. So the plan is that we're going to bring the resources to this train station, and then we're going to start smelting them using the pure alt recipes. And I thought there's no better space to do it than right here. But in order to make the most of the resources, we're going to be using the pure alternative recipes, which means we're going to need a lot of refineries and I don't want to be placing down hundreds. So you better believe we're going to be using blueprints. But the problem is that refineries are so big that you can't really fit many inside a blueprint designer. We have the ability to place three within here and we could do something with the pipes and the conveyors, but it's all going to have to be above this level. So I think what we're going to do for this instead is actually make use of two levels. So we will build a ground floor or lower floor, which is going to hold all the logistics. And then above this, we will have our refineries. So we could have them here and we will snap this top section to the bottom section. One thing that is important though, is that we use smart splitters. And the reason for that is we're going to set it all to overflow so that the system will gradually start turning on one refinery at a time. And here we are with the first floor. I am actually going to have to do another one opposite to this so that we can mirror the build. And you'll see we have the overflow set in front and then it's going to prioritize the right output for whatever resources we need. With this, I need to show you the top half. Ta-da! I'm actually keeping this really simple, so I'm not using lots of signs for this, simply because we're going to be having quite a large factory, and the last thing that I want is to be going back and forth for more resources. So jumping over, you can see that we have got our ground level. This is actually the, the top section, the top floor and we will have the resources come down through these holes or up depending on which side they are. The resources will come up here and then the liquids are going to flow down into the refineries and we can obviously set these all to whichever we want. These are iron ingots and another important thing that I've added are these daisy chain joints but what this allows is for really quick connections between different sections of refineries. So that's super important for a scaling facility. I thought what better place to trial this than directly in front of the blueprint designer. That way, if there are any changes that need to be made, we can quickly change them. Uh, so we have our first blueprint here. Uh, so this is the opposite side. And next to this, we're going to place the other one. Let's set it to blueprint mode now and see if it snaps. Lovely. And we have all of the resources flowing in the same direction. The other thing that we need to do, obviously, is the... Oh, look at that. That's fantastic. <laughs> so we need to have the top section. We've got the output that side. So we actually need to flip these around because we're going to have a, a duo walkway in the center like so. And that is... That is the blueprint. Wow, so simple. All we need to do at this point is to grab our conveyors and, uh, or elevators and connect them on both sections. And then on the outside, we've done a tiny little bit of detailing, just two glass walls in the center so that hopefully when looming comes around to early access, we'll have a bit of light seep through there. Though I do believe it's a little bit dark, so we're probably gonna have to add something to that eventually. But yeah, pretty happy with that. Let's start building the blueprints and see how we get on. And here we have it. The first four full lines of Mark IV belts of iron ingots. So we have a total, I think it's 
32 refineries and the last one on the end are all underclocked so that they add up to 25 ingots and uh, you can see we've got the water extractors in the middle really liking how this has turned out so this is the train station that we're going to be using we could potentially add another later on but i want to maximize its throughput first of all so we have eight outputs of resources and we will run the elevators under the floor because I stupidly placed a train line the other side of this. So we're going to run it all the way along here to take the resources up or under even <laughs> uh, across to this. So I, I like the idea of being able to see from above all of the resources coming in and seeing how full the lines are. But the idea is that the resources will run along here. It's gonna be better from a, a above shot. One second. <laughs> Ah, that's better. So what's happening here is all the resources are going to run from the train station under the floor to this sorting area. This is going to be the first of several sorting sections and the premise is quite simple. All of the iron ore that we need to be smelted will be sent to the left and so all of the ores will be split either to the left for iron and all the rest will go straight on. The items that go straight on will be then sent along all the way to the end where we will have the other refineries producing the ingots and all of the iron will be sent under the water there and then up into the center section where it will disperse among all of the refineries here for the iron. That's if it all goes to plan. Also, if you're wondering how I'm building under the water, I've placed a platform below and it's pretty simple. I'm just placing them directly down as you can see here. Um, so no silly tricks, we're, we're just making it nice and simple, placing it below. The only problem is the ripples sometimes make you place the, the wrong line or goes in the wrong direction. Regardless, we're taking our time with this. We're going to continue running this all the way along to here to then go up to here where you can see the resources turn off and up into the system. Okay, the refineries are ready. So at this point, we need to get some resources in so that we can trial it, which of course meant that I needed to build a new train station for the first lot of resources. And here we are. I absolutely love the shape of this. I can't get over it. It just works so well here. The plan is definitely to have more of these train stations. So each one will kind of connect the local node to the main facility. There we go, let's save that and send it on its merry way. We're going to jump over now to the refinery. I tell you what, this is such a perfect train line. I love what we've done here. It just works so well and really blends the outer section of the waterfalls to the main factory. And here we are, the first of the resources should be coming through any moment now, unless I, uh, there we go, <laughs> unless I messed up. Thankfully I didn't. Oh, that is so satisfying. And now with a little bit of luck, we're going to start seeing the refineries turning on. So there we have two, we have two on. Uh, one thing I should mention is we've only got six of the eight lines. So some of these won't run. Hmm, why are only two running? Ah, I know the reason. I didn't connect them up, did I? And a few hours later, we now have the first section of copper along with our iron here. You may notice though that the copper line is much longer and that's because I totally missed, forgot or just didn't realize at the time that the copper ingots pure recipe is slightly different to the iron ingots one. I thought they were the same for some reason. So I had to add a lot more refineries. Regardless, that's all prepped. It's just occurred to me that I haven't explained why I'm doing this. So the idea is that we're moving away from producing X number of resources per minute at a factory and creating these large scaling systems that can um, scale up or down according to the throughput of resources. And that way we can just keep adding more resources to this area. And then from the output, we'll have our raw resources now as ingots sent on to the factories that they're required. So this is just the start of our mega factory, if all goes right. Actually, I think I've done this wrong. 
we've got a full output line. Like we've built this, oh, we've built this factory so that the output line is full. When what I'd planned to do was to have the input line full so that we'd have a maximum of 480 resources on this line rather than 480 on the, the output. Oh no, I've done all my maths wrong. Okay, so I've calmed down after the realization there and we've reworked it. So what we had originally was um, eight refineries and the whole reason for that was we had 480 resources going on the output and we had 65 ingots per refinery. And so we worked it out as seven point, let's say four refineries. However, I wanted the input line to be the one that was maxed out. And so what we actually needed to do was 48, uh, 480 divided by 35, which left us with rounding up 14 refineries per line of resources, which meant all of this was wrong. <laughs> I mean, it, it's fine. I've just had to delete blueprints and then rebuild them, which took me ages. How I wish I'd done this in experimental. And here we have the first two lines of Mark IV iron belts here. I still need to remove, I think I'm going to remove the first blueprint there and break it up. And then we'll have the other two lines just along from there. So it's going to hopefully be about the same length as the copper line. And then we can double that up and we'll be done. I've now completed the iron lines. We still need to add the water. As you can see, this is still waiting for that. But you can see we've added a little break in between the refineries. So this is actually surprisingly the same length as the copper line, the other side of this. And each of these sections, these blocks, do four full lines of iron. So we've got two here and two right at the start. And if we run in here, these bring the full Mark IV belt of iron ore to the at the refineries. And then on the other side, we split off each full line of iron that we produce. And I think it's something like one, two, 3.5 lines full of iron per two of iron ore that we produce. So that is now done, thankfully. That's out of the way, which means we can concentrate on expanding the copper. I've jumped ahead ever so slightly. We've now got the eight iron lines ready, the eight copper and four of the caterium. For the time being, I don't see the point in adding another four belts of caterium because we just don't have that much available to us at the moment. So we've started adding all the awesome sinks. And with that in mind, we're going to add the awesome sinks both at the end of each of the lines, but also for each of the splitters. You can see we've got smart splitters all along there. So we need a total of eight awesome sinks. As you can can see the build has progressed a little bit more. We've added the water extractors and also all the awesome sinks at the end. So this is ready to go. We just need to make sure that it's all connected to power and then from there bring the resources in, which is its own problem because we only have this train station bringing resources in at the moment and it's only iron and not even that much of it because they're all impure nodes. So the next thing we need to do is build a station here to harvest all of the resources in this area, as well as another one over here in the void. And once we've ascertained that our system can provide enough throughput for these resources, we can start to expand further. But before we do that, we have a problem, don't we? Yeah, the problem is that if we look over here, because this build is so big, we have a huge deficit to power. We're producing 6,000, consuming 5,700 odd at the moment. But our max consumption, if this was to turn on, is 27,000. So we need to do something with power. We're going to need to add maybe some fuel generators on top of our rig over there, just temporarily. We don't need to do the whole 27,000 megawatts, but we're going to need at least a couple of thousand so that we can start running everything without too many worries. Obviously, you can see that we've already got the iron running over there. So we're going to jump across to the oil rig that's all the way over there. And you can see we've run the fuel lines along to this point. So we're going to have two arms of fuel generators just either side, and I think Having about 16 will work perfectly well for us. So we're going to just remove all of these for now. And then from this point onwards, we're going to do a grid. I, 
how many do we need? Probably four. I think four is about right. And we're going to have to go back, oh, I don't know, at least 10, maybe one or two more than that. Next, I'll run the walkway all around the outside so that we nicely enclose it all, like so. And at this point, we're going to be placing down our fuel generators. So we want four on each side, and then we're just going to pipe them up, add some power, and uh, these are going to be running. This isn't even going to be using all of the fuel in, in the pipe. It's just enough to get us started, and then from that point, we'll be able to hopefully work on another project for fuel. In fact, we'll probably do turbo fuel. I think that would be good. With the power running, it is time for us to get started on that train station. We're going to skip ahead because it's gonna take a long time doing the trains and you guys have already seen that. So I'll show you what we've done once it's finished. So here we have the first of the two new stations. This one is taking a very similar style approach as the one that we did previously. And given that we do have two limestone nodes, five iron nodes, if I remember correctly, as well as a copper node, and these aren't impure this time, or at least not all of them are, we might have a problem with throughput. So we may have to extend the train station later on, but for now, we're just going to see how it runs. And here we are with this all up and running. We've also had to add the signals so that now that we've got multiple trains on the line, that they're not going to collide because the other train station is now built as well. And I really like what we've done with this. We've got a loop for the return rail as well as the main one going to the train station. The only thing is, and I hadn't really thought this through, is that there are very few resources here. Regardless, the system is working. It's actually running really well. You can see that the systems are turning on and then from there, the resources are being produced and sent to the sinks. So what we will need to do is work on another train station over here to take these said resources to the needed factories. But there's no point doing that until we have a much larger power supply available. So if you do want to see me turn 600 crude oil into a crazy large turbo fuel setup, I think it's something like 1000 odd fuel per minute, then make sure to subscribe and join us for the next video. And of course, if you did enjoy this, make sure to hit the thumbs up. It really is appreciated. Special thanks does go to all of our amazing supporters on Patreon, most notably our Solar Eclipse patrons, James Irwin, Fireflesh, and Trebor, as well as our Lunars, the Calamity, Ben, Star, Shoku, the Yemen Wolf, and that dude AW, as well as our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Brain Slug. Until next time, as always.